It's kind of like hardware or software. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to put into words. Nowhere. When I got robbed, man, with the gun put to my head, I'm sitting in this guy's car, and the guy was sitting in the car like, you don't even know who I am, do you? So uh, he still took my drugs, money, shoes, jewelry, everything I had, but I felt the peace of God in that car where I knew he couldn't take my soul. Bobby Real Montgomery is a Christian rap artist. His song titled, Yeah, 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 was recently featured in Under the Stadium Lights with Milo Gibson and Lawrence Fishburne. Bobby and I discuss his unwavering dedication to his faith, his passion for music, and his community. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm good. How you doing, man? Good. I don't have my video on right now. You can you can leave yours on if you want to, so I can see your beautiful face. But if you want to turn <laughs> yours off, uh, you're more than welcome to, man. Um, That's fine. Yeah, whatever I'm... whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I I don't. Uh, I am literally set up in my basement's closet and. I look a hot mess. The basement looks a hot mess. My closet <laughs> looks a hot mess. So it's not very presentable. One day I'm gonna get it up to speed, but uh, but yeah, it's man. cool. It's How, cool. I'm in, I'm in my my bedroom chilling. Can you see me good though? I can see you. I can see you very well. Yeah, man, dude. Right. How have you been? It has been years. Man, I know, man. It's crazy when I seen you, man. It was like <laughs> I thought I seen an angel, man. Cause I'm like, is this, I'm like, am I dreaming? This is crazy, <laughs> man. I've I've been good though, man. Just you know, family life. You know, married, two kids. Um, yeah, I got to Jacksonville, Florida in uh, 07, so I just been chilling, man. So you've been staying in Jacksonville, Florida since 2007. When did you get out of the military? You were in the Navy too, right? Yeah, I was in the Navy. I got out in 2010. I went in in um, 2002. Okay. And I got out in 2010. So, Dude, I remember when you got in because we were we were going to the same church together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real quick side story. When, you, when we were in at church we were dancing yeah. right to yeah. the music right yeah. then and there i think you bobby real aka bobby b invented <laughs> the dab right then and there dude <laughs> i know man <laughs> hey that's crazy ain't it yes yes i think you did that dude i think you did it and then it just went around the world everybody took it up <laughs> Because hey, we were dancing just like that, dude. When I see these kids doing all this dab stuff, and I'm like, man, that ain't Bobby B. <laughs> <laughs> say we say we been doing that. <laughs> We've been doing that, dude, for years. For years, yeah. Oh, uh, that's crazy. You remember that, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh so, my so we went to so we went to the same church together. I got there somewhere around 2000 or 2001. Yeah. And then, you know, I was there when you showed up in your in your uniform because, you know, I think that the pastor had did some prayer or something. It's all a blur, yeah. to be honest. It was so yeah. long ago. You know, it's 20 years ago, really, almost. Yeah. Yeah. 20 years, man. And so um, and I remember you coming in in your uniform and then and then you were gone, dude. And then I saw you. When was it? 2000. Was it 2017? Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it had to be because I was still working in the crane shop at the time. So it was like 17 or 18. Yeah. Somewhere around that. Yeah, it was in 17. Yep. Yeah. So I saw you. I was still in the military working on submarines in the Navy. And I saw you on the pier. And I'm like, how, wh what are you <laughs> doing here? You know? So you worked, so you got out of the military when, dude? Was it, two, you said 2010? Yeah, I got out in 2010. And then uh, I ended up getting a job with the military in 2012. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. like a contractor, right? A DOD. Um, okay. Civil service, yep. Are you still, are you still doing that? Yeah, I still do civil service, but now I'm in um uh, in the logistics supply department now. Okay. 
what is that what you did in the military as well? Part of it, yeah. I was a, a BM in a, a military, but yeah, we did all that supply logistics. We did everything like that. Dude, you're let let's not uh, let's not bury the lead here. You, my friend, are a musician, uh, a rap star, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hey, dude, you're man. getting big, man. So you got a, so you got a new hit, or it's not necessarily new. It's been out for a few years, but um, yeah. you have a song that has been included in a recent movie. Why don't Why don't you take us through the journey of your dude? We have so many stories, man. Hey, Amen. Real quick, real quick, before you take us on the journey, do you remember when we were driving around around Atlanta, around Smyrna, <laughs> in our cars? putting on lyric list tracks, right? The beat tracks. Yeah. Riding around, freestyling, making freestyling. stuff up as we go. Yeah. Dude, that yeah. was a ama- that was the start of it, right? <laughs> that we I helped make you, right? That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I remember those freestyle sessions, man. I I mean, I I started writing poems when I was like in, in kindergarten, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. but I think when me, you, and uh, we started hooking up with Danny B, and he was Danny doing them B. instrumentals. Yes. Uh, it just, a fire just started, man, and it was just like flaming, flaming hot fire. You yes. know? So I remember them freestyles. man. I wish we could have recorded some of them, man, because if we could go back and listen to them now, it might be still <laughs> dope. You never know. <laughs> My 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 verse would be a hot mess, but you know I did my best, dude, to keep up with you guys. <laughs> you was trying, hey, that's the thing, hey, the effort, man, that was the effort behind it. Who you knows? was doing your thing? Had I kept at it, man, I'd have been the next Eminem. For real, for real, for real. <laughs> you hey, all you had to do was throw them lyrics on the hot beat, man. Yeah, you, you probably would have been singing on them tracks, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? So, so yeah. So, take us through your journey, man. Like- man, I just start with the journey from the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I okay. started from the journey, man, it'll be like, uh. But well, that it, song, it's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got enough. We got all the time in the world, man. I mean, we got oh, an okay. hour if you want it. You know, we got two if you want it. But uh, you know, okay. I because I, I I when I sit down and talk with people, man. I want them to understand the full story, you know, okay, like, where are you cool. from? Okay. What did you do? How did you get to where you are? Where are you going? How can, uh, you know, how have you helped other people or whatever? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's dope. I'm glad you said that. Cause I was really thinking about, okay, time sensitivity or time crunch. You know, sometimes when I do this stuff, um, it is, I might have like five minutes and I'm like, let me throw everything in there in five minutes real quick. But, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, but yeah, uh, I'll just start from when me and you and um, uh, when me and you and Hank was hanging out, you know, at, at the church, and we was doing music and stuff like that, and uh, you know, for real, I I got really saved, man. When I got serious for God, I was like 18, you know, and mm-hmm. before that, man, um, I got caught up in in selling drugs, man. I was selling crack cocaine at a uh, at a young age, you know, 15 years old, um, really wasn't going to high school like I should have been. I just say that, but I was, uh, doing stuff in the street that I had no business doing, man. I was, I was running from God. I was, I was raised in a church and, you know, I just didn't have a good influence, uh, far as, you know, older brothers. (laughs) I'm just being real, but yeah. I, I seen so many things growing up, man, and I just wanted to make some quick money. I was still working. I was working at Crystals and other places, but I was working. So uh anyway, man, I end up I end up getting locked up at 17. Um and while I was in jail, I was like, you know, Lord, if you uh it's just after some months, you know, I was like, Lord, if you get me out of here, you know. I do what you call me to do, write songs, whatever you want me to do, because I, I knew I had the gift of writing, yeah. but I, I never wanted to really write in the world. I just never wanted to really rap like that secular. So uh, God got me out. Uh, I didn't have no lawyer, no bail, no nothing. He, he just got me out. And uh, 
you know, same day I got out, I started back selling again. Mm-hmm. So I'm leading up to something, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm 18, just got out of jail, and um, I end up getting robbed, man. And when I, when I got robbed, man, with the gun put to my head, I'm sitting in this guy's car, and the guy was sitting in the car like, you don't even know who I am, do you? So he held the gun to my head, and, and I said, who are you? He said, I could be a jacker, I could be an undercover, or I could be sent. So since he said sent, man, I knew about God and the devil. And while he was holding the gun to my head, I was just like audible like this. I said, God, if you real, forgive me right now, because I know if I die, I'm going straight to hell. And mm-hmm. while he was holding a gun to my face, uh, to my head, he said, you better be glad that God forgave you because I was going to kill you. Mm-hmm. So uh, he still took my drugs, money, shoes jewelry, everything I had, but I felt the peace of God in that car where I knew he couldn't take my soul. So, you know, he made me get out. Uh, I went home. My parents, they was just like, uh, well, we we was praying that God allowed something to happen to you to get your attention. Mm-hmm. So when God got my attention, that's when God brought to my mind, look, I gave you this gift to write poems, to write songs, and I want you to use it. And I, you know, I wasn't really thinking about seriously rapping like that. My key thing was football, man. I love playing football in high school. That's, I, man, I dreamed of going to the NFL. That's what I was thinking about. You know, yeah. I wasn't really thinking about music like that. So anyway, you just got caught up, huh? I just got caught up, you know, and um, kind of got the big head in high school playing football. You know, star wide receiver and. I just felt like, man, I could do whatever. They'll still let me play. But uh, that <laughs> that wasn't the case. But uh, Dude, I think I remember you telling that story, actually, a long time ago. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, that was super impactful for a lot of people, especially, you know, younger kids kind of looking up to, to us older kids that were that were there in the in the community, in the church. That's super yeah. powerful, man. That I mean, it's unfortunate, obviously, that you felt like you needed to to take that route and yeah. it's obviously unfortunate that you got locked up or, you know, that you had to, an encounter with, with someone like that with a gun pointed to your head. I mean, yeah. That's intense, dude. Yeah. That that's very intense. I mean, you know, I had just had a friend when that guy had the gun to my head. I don't think I could think about with a friend of mine who had uh, got killed a year prior to me having that incident happen to me. So I was thinking like, man, is this going to happen to me? What just happened to uh, one of my homeboys? So yeah, that was that was a shaker. It, and, you know, and the thing for me was that, you know, people was, when you're in that life, you, you mean people was getting robbed or whatever, but it wasn't that I got robbed. It was just the whole spiritual, supernatural side of it. You know, when, when that guy was like, I, you don't know who I am, and you just met the devil, and he was like, I'm gonna not never see you out here selling drugs again. I'm gonna kill you if I see you again out here. And I'm thinking, like, who really, one, who really knows who I am like that? Who really cares if I'm right. selling drugs like that? And they, you know, it's like, I don't know who you are. Yeah, I, you're right. I never seen you before, so how would I know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So did he? Did he have a mask on? No, he 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 didn't have a mask on, but I tell you the look on his face, man. His eyes was just jet black, man. He he didn't have no white in his eyes. It was they was just jet black. Um, he had a hat on, but you could see his face. But his face was, I don't know if you ever seen one of them, um, or if you ever seen somebody in real life in one of them uh, horror movies where they'd be so angry and mm-hmm. just evil looking that they could do anything to you. Yeah, that's how he was looking. And I was like, man, who the world <laughs> is this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna front, man. I, I was sober because, I, you know, I was high and drunk. But when that incident happened, God got me sober real quick. And I was like, Jesus, if you're real, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Shoot, so, man. So then. Real talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you, so from that experience, do you feel like that that kind of catapulted you into 
like a different traje- trajectory into yes, it, the music industry or yes it did it really did because uh god allowed me to finish a song that i had started writing and it was called second chance and it was like you know i got a second chance god gave me some grace but yeah that catapulted it and um once i realized what god wanted me to do and he wanted me to you know use the music and go back in the streets and and bring people to him so uh that happened when i was 18 I think before, I think by the time I was 19 or whatever, I was recording my first song in the studio, uh, rapping about Jesus and Second Chance and how God, you know. And from that point on, man, I I never looked back, man. I just kept writing and kept writing. And, um, you know, God's, God's been opening up doors, you know, like that. But, yeah, I started, I really started when I got off the street at 18, man. I started and then, you know, I started going to um, the church and that's where I started meeting you guys and everything. And mm-hmm. man, it was like, man, I, I'm not going back. But I, I was like, I'm going to use this gift um, that God gave me and give the same energy in the rap and the gift that he gave me the same way I was on the football field. You know, I went mm-hmm. I went hard when I played football and I was like, you know, I might have lost that opportunity in football, but I'm not going to lose it with this uh this music and um and i i start realizing that you know a lot of the worldly secular music that i was listening to before was like leading me down the wrong path so i wanted to put a new message out there to to help people come to the lord you know and speaking of new messages man during that time there were actually a lot of new up-and-coming artists uh in that Christian sector all around the city and actually around the Southeast. Right. Right. Do you remember going with us? I know that it was me too. There was a whole group of people, me, Isaiah, uh, you know, rock that he calls himself rock. Uh, I mean, I can call him rock. It's fine. Isaiah, uh, Lindsay, I think is his last name. And then, yeah, yeah, you got Noel, right. And then all, all the group of just us, going around i was a little bit older so i was driving and we also had frank go with us too yeah Uh, yeah. and we went to these venues to listen to these new up-and-coming artists yeah and i i think that they i think that isaiah and oh um jay as well Yeah, yeah yeah so i think that they actually performed at one of these things um before too i can't remember off the top of my head but i do remember going and you know being a part of that whole scene where these young guys were just getting up there and then just spilling their heart out you know mm-hmm. telling what the what they feel is true what's true to them what helps them you know and basically sp- spreading that positive message you yeah know? you remember yeah. that dude I do. I do man and it, it felt good you know cuz like you say i was a little older too and it just felt good to have um, people that was like on the same vibe, you know, because I remember I uh, helped Noel write one of his first songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we called him, uh, we called him Lil Snap, you know, yeah. so <laughs> Lil Snap on the mic, you know. <laughs> but it was just, it's just a blessing when you see that. When I seen that, I was like, wow, you know, all people need is an alternative um, yeah. to this crazy music that's out here. This is all people need. And and it just, I was like, wow, this is powerful. You know, this is really powerful. And now look look where it is now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I mean, you're blowing up. I mean, ain't no two ways about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. God, and, and, you know, and I'm going to be real with you. Um guy has really opened up a lot of doors but i tell you this um i have not compromised at all i mean it was like i mean not perfect but i'm talking about with the music stuff man it's been plenty of opportunities to uh when i was younger sell out and do secular music and i had all these opportunities to do this and do that and mm-hmm. only thing i could think about is man what god delivered me from and I'm like, 
man, I'm not turning my back on God. I, it might take a while because when I got out the game, I was getting opportunities, you know, when I was young, like before I even went to the military, you know, yeah. and then in the military, oh man, you could, you could do this, but it was all secular opportunities. Right. And I was just like, man, I just want to wait on God. I, I, I just want to do this for God. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You know, so you so, were still writing while you were in the military? Yeah, man. I was writing in the military. I was writing on the ship. I was writing on deployments. Man, I got notebooks and folders and all kind of stuff. I, I just, you know, because God would give me these songs, man. I would, I would dream about these songs, man. And I, that's how I would get them sometimes. I would have dreams about the songs God wanted me to write. Mm-hmm. So... You basically saw, you envisioned, like, how, did you envision the lyrics? Did you envision, like, the beat or the orchestration? Like, what was that like? A lot of times it was it was both, but the, the difference was with the music. I didn't have nobody at the time to do the music. Mm-hmm. So it was like um, I was getting the hooks and I was getting the, the lyrics. So, you know, a lot of times, nine times out of ten, once you got a tight hook, they'll be able to do a beat for it. But yeah, that's how it was, man. It was like, and I wouldn't even, it's not like I was praying before I went to sleep and I'm like, Lord, give me a song. It was, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, 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 you fall asleep and God might have a surprise for you sometimes. It wasn't every night, but it was just like, boom, wake you up out your sleep three, four in the morning with this beat or these lyrics in your head. And you're like, man, like I'll be sleeping like half awake and half sleep, and it's like I'm hearing this music, I'm dreaming about these songs, and then when I wake up, it's still in my head. So I'm like, okay, let me hurry up and write this down before I forget. You know it's what like, I'm saying? It's like rap Christmas. Exactly. You <laughs> know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> wake up! I'm like, oh, okay. There it is. You know? so, so when you got off deployment and um, finally got into a space where you could sit down, go over your notes, go over your, your lyrics. Um, how did you, how did you come about the beats? Like, did you dabble in some of that music production side or did you get someone else to, to help you out with that? Um, actually I got somebody else like, and now how I would do it. I would do, I would do the beats with my mouth and record it in the phone. Mm. So at, at least they would have an idea of how I wanted it to sound. Like, you know how you do stuff, music with your mouth, like, or whatever. Uh-huh. I would do that and get with the uh, producer who was um, a professional in that mm-hmm. and let them bring it out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would, I would have a hook. I would have a, the song. I, would, I already had the melody. So when the producer would hear the melody from me, mm-hmm. they'll be able to, you know, flow with him like okay like this and then i could go in there and let them know nah change this do this do this i need this sound and that's just how it is you hear the sound in your head and it's like uh that ain't sounding right i need this kind of sound you feel me so was that a service that you paid for or was that somebody that you knew that could do this uh it's a service you know um really you paying for studio time so when you pay for the studio time with whatever the producer is Mm -hmm. uh they'll do what you need them to do. And, and that a lot of time that, that you pay for, you know? So yeah, that, that's how that works. A lot of times though, if it was like a song, I would go, if it was a song from scratch, I would go in, I would um, do the hook, the chorus, mm-hmm. they would make the beat. And then I'll probably come back another session when I got the beat and got the lyrics down and then go back and record the whole song. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's how, that's how I still do it now, you know? So how did it come about that? Um, um, uh, what is it under the stadium lights with Milo Gibson, Gibson, uh, Gibson Milo Gibson, that, but that's Mel Gibson's, uh, is it, he related to Mel Gibson? I think it's his yeah. son. Yeah. yeah, that's his son. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's his boy. Milo Gibson yeah. and Lawrence Fishburne. Um, well, like I say, I wrote Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that out since like 2017, 2018. And uh it actually happened through me doing outreach. You know, I was 
I was doing outreach with a lady here in Jacksonville. Um, I did some outreach with her in Atlanta. And when you, know, you say just, outreach for people do, who don't understand okay. what that means, can you explain okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Well, outreach is basically we in a community where we're serving the people in the community and whatever local community there is, you know, we're giving food out, we're, you know, helping people, we're praying for people and we're doing music sometimes and, and just really serving the community. We might be cleaning up the neighborhoods or just showing the love of God outside of the church walls. Um, just, just serving, you know, serving, doing mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, um, and so that's why uh, I would also use the gift of rapping too in the community. So, mm-hmm. you know, we <laughs> serving uh, food, helping homeless people or cleaning up. And then, you know, there's an opportunity for me to do music also mm-hmm. to bless the people in that way. And so you uh, just stand on a stand on a crate in the middle of the city and just spit. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. <laughs> Wherever, man, it's been, it's been on crates, it's been on stages, it's been, uh, whatever you ship. can think of. <laughs> I'm telling you, on the ship, yeah, they, they actually played my song on the ship too one time. Um, nice, dude. And overseas in one of these malls, they played my song, but that's another, that's another story. But that's what, oh, that's a story <laughs> right now. Tell me about that one, <laughs> man. We's uh. We was in Dubai. Me and my uh, friend was in Dubai, and uh, we was just doing some shopping and stuff like that. And, and I mean, there's tons of people in this mall in, mm-hmm. at, at this particular store. And um, I don't know what my friend did, but uh, the owner of this store, he was like, look, I like this guy. We just finna play his music in our store. So mm-hmm. next thing I know, I'm hearing my music all over the store in the middle of Dubai and I'm sitting there thinking like these people don't even know what I'm rapping about but it was, <laughs> you know people coming up to me man left and right wanted me to autograph sign stuff and nice. they, you know I'm like goodness <laughs> like right there and you know Dubai is mostly a Muslim country you yeah. know so I'm sitting there like they in the store playing my music and I'm up here rapping about Jesus <laughs> and they don't even realize it, you know? So you heard it, it here, folk here. You heard it here first, folks. If you ever go to Dubai, <laughs> listen to Bobby B in a store somewhere. <laughs> I'll tell you, that was weird. It, but Hey, you never know what God doing, man. I was, you know, I was just always be ready, you know, always yeah. be ready. So yeah. where so what are you doing? Um so let's go back to that story though. So how okay, how, yeah. how he got picked up by the by oh, the yeah. production company. Yeah, so the lady um introduced me to a guy, uh, another uh rap artist, and uh we got to know each other. And um, you know, after maybe a couple of months of me knowing this guy, he he just hit me up out the blue, man. He was like, Hey man, it's um opportunity um a movie's looking for music and you could submit a few of your songs Mm -hmm. so i submitted three songs and two weeks went by and he hit the guy hit me back up and was like hey man the producers really like one of your songs Mm -hmm. so the movie actually had been delayed a lot it was supposed to come out in 18 it was supposed to come out in 19 Mm. and So I think um, last year is when uh, the guy reached out to me, like, I could submit my song. So since I was thinking, like, man, it's been delayed. They've been, I don't know if it's really going to come out. You know, it's kind of like, I don't even know if the movie's going to come out. And the guy, uh, he hit me up again and he said, well, the producers, they had to fire an editor, so we had to get a new editor for the movie, and some of the songs didn't get selected. And this guy and works I, for the production company? He's, he's like, connected to them some kind of way. He know them real good or something like that. He's a rapper, too. Mm-hmm. But he, I guess he behind the scenes. But um, they got rid of, like, eight songs from the oh, first wow. edit. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, goodness not i hope it ain't mine and, and it wasn't it wasn't though they kept my song and uh man they put it in there man and i was just like shocked when it came out you know yeah. and that was just like a blessing like wow you know um, 
Is this just like a? I haven't seen the movie yet. I I've mm-hmm. been meaning to. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. Yeah, um, and you gotta. I think you gotta pay for it. It's not one of the Amazon Prime originals or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta pay for that one. It's all um, good. I'll I'll pay for it. I'll I'll support it. I just want to hear your song on there, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in there. I was like, man, you know, uh, probably maybe. 15 minutes into the movie, um, they play my music in there and they play it again at the end of the credits. And it was just uh, amazing to see my name at the end of the credits. Like, wow, God really opened this door like that. And I, I didn't see it coming. That's what I'm saying. It's like, Mm -hmm. this is something that I wasn't trying to do. I wasn't like kicking down doors. Yeah. I was just doing my thing. Just, I never really thought about it. I mean, when I would hear music on movies, I would say, in my mind, not talking mm-hmm. to nobody, just God knew. I was like, man, it'd be cool to have a song in a movie. And I never really yeah, tripped about it. It was just like, whatever. So mm-hmm. when this opportunity came, the thing is, I, I've been through a lot in this music, man. I mean, I've been turned down. I've been rejected. I've been... Mm-hmm. you know, lifted up, dropped. So I just was level-headed when the opportunity came to me. I'm like, okay, God, if this you, it'll work. If not, it's all good. I'm, I'm going to keep it moving. So I wasn't just overly excited. You know what I mean? But yeah, when I seen my name actually in the movie and I heard it, that's when I realized, oh, this is real deal. Like, mm-hmm. they sent me the, the synchronization contract and Asking me for all my uh, information and stuff like that. That's when I realized, oh, this, this the truth. Like this, this is no play, play. You know. So, so, so you got compensated for that, right? Yeah, the compensation comes. Um, it comes at, at quarterly. You know, it's not like you get an upfront thing, but it's like however your song's doing on the movie, and you know, people um, watching it and downloading it and stuff like that. So. Okay, so if I buy the movie, then that helps you out? Yeah. Okay, well, a done deal then. Yeah, it helps out. Um, so, And that's something that's like percentages, but that's like forever, you know? So yeah, whenever the movie get on the, um, uh, well, not just stream, but it was in the theater, but the stream, and then whenever it get like on regular TV, that's, that's something that's always going to be, kicking in from time to time you know yeah that's awesome dude yeah yeah that's real nice dude that's that's i'm so proud of you man for <laughs> sticking to Thanks, your guns man. and doing what you do you know Thanks, and never man. giving up yeah man I, I appreciate it it is nothing but the holy ghost god's spirit man that that help you and keep you um encouraged because like i say it's been Plenty of things the devil tried to do to me to try to keep me from moving forward. I don't thought about giving up like at least four or five times. Just like, you know what? Maybe this ain't for me. You know, maybe I've outgrown it or Mm -hmm. maybe it's just, you know, but it's like God kept giving me songs. And I'm like, well, God, if if you don't want me to do this no more, then why do you keep giving me these songs? (laughs) You know, but... When this happened, it just encouraged me even more. Like, nah, man, you're doing what I'm telling you to do. You're on the right path. Keep doing it. There's more to come. So, and I'm I'm speaking like this to bring encouragement to anybody watching or listening because um, living your life as a Christian, man, you're going to get hit. You're going to go through trials and tribulation. But we have God that is already victorious, you know, so... We just got to stand and, and trust and have faith that he going to walk us through all the difficult things and he going to bring the past what he what he said he going to bring the past in our lives, you know? Mm. Yeah. So when you go so, to, when you going to open up your church? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? I you know, it's funny you say that because um I I was told by a man of God when I was like um, my parents say I was like, not, no, nah, I was a kid. I was about five, you know, mm-hmm. four or five. And the man of God told my parents, Hey, the youngest one, he going to preach the word of God. Now 
And uh, I've dibbled and dabbled as a pastor at this one particular church at one time. You know, what they, you know, at the church, they uh, ordained me as a youth pastor and, uh, you know, outreach pastor. For y'all that don't know outreach, <laughs> where you're out in the community, you're helping the people, <laughs> you're serving, <laughs> you're doing your due diligence. Right. All right. No, nah, I was just playing. But <laughs> <laughs> at that at that particular church, you know, so I, they gave me a, a little certificate and had me doing stuff at that church at the time. But I don't know if that ordination is still, you know, whatever. I don't know, mm-hmm. technically, whatever. But uh, when I was going there, you know, I preached a few sermons here and there. But when I'm in the streets, out in the outreach, um, serving the people in the community. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but when I'm out there, man, you know, um, God always puts stuff on my heart to to uh to say or to preach or whatever. But the church thing is like I've had dreams of having a church. I don't know when, I don't know where, but um uh, um You think I, that's I something that you would want to do? Sometimes I think that's a lot of responsibility, it's man. A, yeah. Sometimes I think there's a lot of responsibility. Other times I think, like, man, I, I love the evangelistic side of ministry when I'm, like, out and about because I don't have to feel like I'm, like, stationary mm-hmm. in a way. I, if it was a church, per se, I don't think it would be a traditional type of church. I think it would be more like um, people come. People get delivered, you know, uh, and then some Sundays we might be in a, in a community, you know, setting up shop like that. So uh, I don't I, if it was, I don't know if it would be the traditional type of church, you know, because I'm I'm yeah. all for revival and the everything, you know. So, yeah, you know, a lot of churches popping up here in the modern modern day are not mm-hmm. traditional. So Mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily be um, part of the outlier on that, on that front. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. But Um, it is, it is a lot of responsibility though. I mean, and it's not, so at that point it almost becomes a job. Right, right. right, You've got to dedicate so much time to everything, everything. You got to be basically a business owner. Um, taking care of the bills, taking care of the equipment, taking care of the traffic, probably sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's oh, a lot of responsibility yeah. on that one. But you know, if it's something that is rewarding enough for you to kind of commit to it, then you know, hey, people succeed at that, but they also fail. So it just depends on what what you want to do. You know, is is preaching the word something that you kind of want to stick to in music? And in the community. Yeah, in the, the community. Yeah. <laughs> or just something that you kind of want to, I don't want to say box into a central location, but that's almost like what it is. Right. You know, and some people are gifted at that. You know, they yeah. really thrive in that environment. Other people are gifted at doing exactly what you do. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because like always on my heart, one is I like to, um, when I when I think about Jesus and the disciples, um, they flow however the Holy Ghost wanted them to flow. Or you could look at David. You know, he played a string instrument and he prophesied in one area, and then he was killing giants in another area. So it was like, I just want to be able to flow however God lead me. And like I say, sometimes if I'm at a show and it's just me there. I want to, you know, be able to flow where it's like, hey, I might rap a couple songs, but hey, this, this next 15 minutes, I'm preaching a sermon to uh, get people in the kingdom or, hey, I'm about to pray for some people who might need some real deliverance, you know? So uh, it's just the fullness of the Holy Ghost and how it looks. I think that's, I don't really, I can't really see how it looks right now, but mm-hmm. The more, the more and more I I do what, what God calling me to do, I know that's it's just gonna form. You know, it's kind of like, you know how you got people that 
might start, like, for example, they might start uh, preaching on the street corner or something like that. And then before you know it, it's like a whole group of people following them. And they they going from city or town to town with these revivals or stuff like that. So I don't know. I just know this end time, God is really pouring out his spirit. And he really has a heart for revivals. Uh, people really need to be delivered and set free. Mm-hmm. And um, is it's too it's entertainment is one thing but if you're not being delivered after you entertain i I don't know what it's doing for the body of christ you know yeah yeah you're getting deep man man i'm i'm just flowing bro (laughs) (laughs) so you mentioned shows though do you still do do you still do shows yeah well you know covid slowed down some things uh and during covid i was in the process of getting new management. So uh, I got new management when COVID popped off last year. So no, not too many shows last year. But uh, I'm confident that the manager I have now, actually, she is the co-host on the Bobby Jones show. You know, people familiar with Bobby Jones. Uh, Who is so Bobby Jones? Bobby Jones, he's basically... He was on BET, but he basically started, I say, late seventies. He was the one who was like uh, finding all the gospel talent and mm. putting people out with his show. He would have a show where he would always have different gospel artists coming on there singing or mm-hmm. doing gospel music and stuff like that. He, you know, he led a lot of choirs and stuff, so he was really big. He got huge on BT and he got his own show now where he's always uh allowing new talent to come on his show and uh use their gifts on his show and a lot of times just from being on those shows like from Bobby Jones he's worldwide you know mm. uh people people blow up you know like people like Kurt Franklin and oh, yeah. I mean you got all kind of artists that that has been on a Bobby Jones show mm-hmm. uh, and as doing pretty good now. And Bobby Jones, he still got a show out now, you know. On he, BET still? Well, he he left BET, now is on Impact, um, the Impact Network. Okay. So is that on yeah, like he, cable or is that like a like a podcast or is that like a a YouTube channel? What what is that? It's on cable. It's on cable TV and um they they call it the impact network, but um he's been doing it for years. I mean, he about he's he's like eighty some years old now. Oh wow. He's yeah, he started he was doing it he's been doing it for the longest. I mean, he got probably over eighty million people viewing his uh his shows and stuff like that. But yeah. That's a lot of people, dude. Yeah, he's touched. I seen him I seen him take pictures people like Jennifer Lopez ran into him in a restaurant and wanted to take a picture with him, you know? So oh wow, he's well known, well known, you know? So uh, I was, um, my manager is actually a co-host on his show. And, um, I did my song on his show, um, did you? some years back. Yeah. Yeah. I did that song. Yeah. 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 On this show. The Lord Probably. being good to us. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did I did that on the show, man, and he really liked it. He was blessed by it. He really enjoyed it. So That's awesome, dude. Yeah, so um shows shows opening up um maybe this year, you know, it's going to be more things popping off, but mm-hmm. lately with without the shows, I was doing like, you know, a lot of Facebook lives and a lot of people weren't really opening up the churches like that that much. I think it's starting to open up more now, but mm-hmm. hey, I was doing what I could do on Facebook Live and just doing whatever, but done a lot of shows throughout the years, though, in different areas, i tell you that. Dude, when it comes to writing songs for film or, you know, to be considered in a, ma- a major production, um, Sometimes it takes a little bit of, um, you know, 
it takes a particular type of artist to be able yeah. to create something that is that conveys um the world in a way where not only viewers and listeners can relate but also the people who are actually making the movie because they relate to it as well and then yeah. that's why they put it in you know right right so yeah. What is your artistic process like? I know that you said, you know, you have a rap Christmas every now and then. <laughs> but what is your what is your artistic process when you sit down? Do, do you ever sit down and like actually try to write a song or do you just let it come to you? And then whenever it comes, you write it down uh, because some people are pretty determined when it comes to writing film scores you know, they, they're asked to do it. So then it's right, kind of right. like, it can't really come to them. They have to create it on the spot. You know what right, I mean? Right, 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 right. So right. have you, number one, what is your process like? And number two, have you thought about getting into that space a little bit more and actively pursuing, um, you know, maybe writing some songs that go along with, you know, relative or, you know, related films that you could speak to? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, well, first the process is, like I say, you know, it's always prayer and um, fasting. But uh, another thing is, I do everything I can to not be influenced by the secular rappers that's out there. Mm-hmm. Or uh, like I listen to a lot of Christian rap too, mm-hmm. but when it comes to being creative. I do what I can to like shut out all the um, distractions because I want the unique originality of God with the gift that he placed in me. So that's, that's number one, what I do. I mean, if I'm, it, it might sound strange, but I do a lot of worship. I do, I do a lot of, you know, worship, listening to worship music and, mm-hmm. you know, I just, like to zone out like that so almost like God, a, almost like a spiritual meditation right? yeah 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 exactly you know it's like a spiritual meditation and so god will put certain things on my heart that i might ponder on for some time and then it's like okay i need to write this hook and then when i write the hook then i might write the verse after that a lot of times it's just a hook Sometimes I just start off with a with a catchy hook. Mm-hmm. And when I get that catchy hook, for me, once I get a catchy hook and the hook is solid, pretty much the song, that's a done deal, you know, because I know um, the lyrics are going to come right after that. Um, for as writing uh, for movies, yeah, you know, you, it's like you um writing a story. Um, a lot of times if you think about songs, People like the story. People like a relatable story. Um, when you're reading a book, you want to read a good story. Yeah, something you can some, relate to. Something you can relate to. And I try everything in my possibility to rap about things that's relatable, rap about things that I know people struggle with, things that I've struggled with. Um, I do the best I can to be transparent, mm-hmm. you know, and and show the human side of being a Christian. <laughs> you know, we're not just floating around with halos on our head all the time, but it's just, you know, uh, displaying that to a world that might think we're just angels or something like that. And, you know, when they see that, man, Christians, they struggle too. Oh, Christians get upset. Christians get angry, you know. Uh, you know, just relatable, realistic, and, and down to earth. And when it's like that, a lot of the movies that you see or a lot of the movies that you might read about, they have some kind of relatability in there where it's like, okay, I could write a song to this. You know, mm-hmm. I see what this person going through. And it's like you feel uh, the vibe or the emotion from that movie, which inspires you to be able to write something according to what that movie is pushing out you know mm-hmm. yeah so it's, it's it's really getting a heart for what it is you know 
it, yeah. it, every movie has a different vibe. It has a different emotional vibe to it. And if you catch that emotional vibe, you'll be able to write something to do, it. Do you think that you'll ever pursue that way of writing? Yeah, um, I really would. And and I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I was I was talking to uh, my wife and my brother one day, and I I said, you know, doing shows is fine, you know, but sometimes it's like, you know, you got to get super fresh, you got to get the super duper wardrobe, you got to get that star look, yeah. and that's all cool and fun. But sometimes, man, I, that get old. It's like I don't really want to be dressing up like this all the time. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and I was I was just like. If I was able to just write powerful, good songs and be behind the scenes mm -hmm. where I didn't really have to go on a stage like that all the time, man, that would be that would be wonderful because I could just write what's on my heart and let the movies just promote it the way they need to promote it, you know, and that you know, people see me every now and then. <laughs> but there's to see my name in the credits, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, what is it about the wardrobe that is so important to, you know, rap artists? Well, um, I, I don't want to just say swag, but honestly, you really got to, you, you got to make yourself look like a star. I mean, you got to look like um, confident, you know, you come on the stage looking like uh, who done it and what for, that affects your audience. The audience, especially the audience that don't know you, they like, who the heck is this guy? Or, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, it's an eye catcher, you know, mm -hmm. wherever you go, um, when people see you, they see, man, it's, it's something special about him. What, mm -hmm. what does he do? Or, you know, so that is, it's just, that's just how people are. People are starstruck, you know, for real. They, they're they starstruck. And when they see you get out the car or they see you come off the plane or they see you walk in that building and, uh, you know, you 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 fresh with whatever your style is, mm -hmm. people gravitate to that. It's like real. a first impression. First impressions. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Their first impression means the most. Because first people impression. people may not have heard of you. They may not yep. know who you are or what you do. So mm -hmm. you got to catch them, you know, in the instant. And then after they kind of follow you to the stage, they're like, oh, OK, this is what this guy's about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I've had people tell me after certain um, shows, because sometimes, you know, I, ha I, I had to open up for a lot of different artists, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Who have you opened up for? Well, I've opened up for uh, Canton Jones. I've opened up for... Um, Diedrich, Diedrich Haddon, um, you know, gospel singer Tasha Cobb. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've opened up for uh, Todd Delaney, um, the uh, Jonathan McReynolds. Uh, what's is this one group? I forgot the name of this group. Uh, I can't remember. Boys. Not them. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> not them, but uh, it's more gospel artists. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Uncle Reese, but you know, different, different, different gospel artists like that, man. And um, but I, I've had people tell me they didn't know who I was, mm -hmm. but when they seen what I was wearing, mm -hmm. they stayed because they wanted to see what I was talking about. They was like, "Who's that guy? Who? I, I want to see what he's, what he's gonna do just mm -hmm. from what I was wearing, mm -hmm. just from how I was dressed." They they stayed to see what i was about if i was a rapper a singer or whatever you know and um where do you go to shop yeah i know right <laughs> man I shop, I shop wherever man um i just i'm the type of person where I, I just like to find nice clothes and put them together uh at one time i had a person that was like you know actually helping me put some of my fists together but mm -hmm. i you know i put i put some good fists together myself too you know so naturally yeah, naturally, for real. Like, um, <laughs> that's just, 
I think that's how I was raised. Bobby B, man. keeping it real and fresh, real fresh. <laughs> I tell you, man. Hey, if you ain't fresh, you a mess. Now nah, let me stop. <laughs> So where are you originally from? Are you from St. Louis or New Orleans? I'm originally from East St. Louis, Illinois, man. That's what it is. That's what East St. Louis, Illinois. Was, I knew it was one of those places. Yeah, Midwest, man. I, that's where my family is. That's uh, You ever go back home to from. visit them? Yeah, man. I, I visit. My grandmother's still there. You know, um, I still got a lot of aunties. I got a lot of cousins still up there. So uh, I visited. East St. Louis, maybe what two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about two years ago. So it's not every year, but like I say, I got hundreds of family still in East St. Louis. You know, yeah. my mom and dad, not you know, they're in, they're still in Georgia, you know, Cobb County area, but uh, mm -hmm. everybody else in East St. Louis mostly. Yeah. I bet they're super yeah. proud of you, man. They are. I, I actually had a cut, uh, auntie hit. My dad up a few days ago saying she was proud of me when she sang that song in the movie and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Um, How's your dad he, doing, man? Man, he he good, man. My dad, my dad looked young, man. He he's still playing them bongos, dude. He, we got him actually. We got him a new pair of bongos on um last year on Father's Day, and he's still playing them, still you know, rocking them out. He's still rocking them, he, but he just play them at the house. And I told him, uh, we got to get it on a song. I want to get him on one of my tracks. So yes, let Bungo Bob. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Yes. Let Bungo Bob go, go, go in. Um, you know, he, he kind of had let it go a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. after, you know, certain churches and stuff like that. But, Mm -hmm. I told him one day, I say, I say, I miss you playing. I, we miss hearing you. Yeah. And he was like, really? I said, yeah. I say, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know how to play, but I love to hear him. Whenever I think of your dad, I immediately think of bongos, dude. With, yeah. He played up in the church and he had <laughs> the biggest hands that I, I have ever seen on a person. <laughs> I'm like, this guy has literally got the biggest hands in the world because he was beating the hell out of those drums. I know. I know. He was beating them like they stole something, man. It, <laughs> hey, it'd be fire on them bongos when he's done, man. I'm telling it'd you, be, man. They'd I'm be smoking. You. Yes. Yes. I, I, I told my dad one day, I said, uh, you look like you got some gloves on your hand. Just. Yeah. Baseball mittens. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but yeah, he, he still played though. I mean, I mean, but it's just at home. He just listened to his worship music and he be playing on bongos with his eyes closed, man. And when I uh, asked him how he learned how to play, he said he just, he played by ear. So mm -hmm. nobody taught him how to play. So he's actually gifted to play the bongos. He never had lessons god oh. just put that on him you know oh, he's super good he's really yeah. really good yeah yeah i'll put awesome, that dude. on him. Yeah. Dude, it's been a blast talking to you i really appreciate <laughs> you taking the time to talk with me to share your story to take us on the journey man from you know basically you being a kid growing up in a bad situation and then turning your life around to do something positive you know man. thank That's you incredible. for incredible yeah, absolutely. Anytime, bro. I really appreciate it. Bobby B, everybody. Man. Every hey, real quick, man. Tell everybody where they can go get your music. All right. I I was I was waiting. I was waiting for the opportunity. Okay, <laughs> y'all. Listen. This is your boy, Bobby Real Montgomery. And you can find my music on any digital platform. However, you listen to music, whatever phone, iPhone, whatever kind of phone you got. Type in Bobby Real Montgomery, and you can listen to all my music. If you go to Google or Yahoo, type in Bobby Real Montgomery, you'll see everything I have. Uh, my website, www.bobbyrealmontgomery.com. So that's everything. And the movie, Under the Stadium Lights, it's on... Um, a lot of streaming networks. One of them is Amazon Prime. I think uh, Voodoo and Redbox. It's a few of them out there, but uh, 
you'll be able to hear my song, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. And under the stadium lights, nice. Bobby Ray Montgomery. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Thank you so much, Bobby. I appreciate it, man. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on. Yeah, man. Bye, everybody. I raised my head to the sky when I touched down. I made it through all the waters on dry ground. I made it through. 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 I raised my head to the sky when I touched down. I made it through all the waters on dry ground. I made it through. 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 Made it through the storm, made it through the rain, made it through the pain, made it through the shame, made it through the everything that tried to take my brain. All the hell I've been through this year make you insane. I've been in the woe, but you can't smell my smoke.